Time now to talk politics. Our roundtable includes talk business and politics contributors Jessica Deloach Sabin and John Burris. Welcome to both of you. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Let's begin. Let's cut right to it. The Arkansas Works vote came out pretty good for the governor this week. All of the Democrats voted for Arkansas Works. A majority of the Republicans voted for Arkansas Works. But is it really now, John Burris, a Republican debate? Uh, it's certainly a debate. You certainly have to get the remaining votes for the appropriation from the Republicans, since that's the, uh, since they were uh, comprised of the the opposition. So, you know, I, I don't think it's a Republican-only debate. Uh, Democrats have been very vocal about some of their uh, some of their problems with the appropriation process. I, I think that 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 seems to have passed, and I hope that it has, because they shouldn't be threatening to block the DHS medical services appropriation. Uh, you're going to have to have a few Republicans who voted against. Arkansas works as a policy. You're going to have to have at least a few of them in each chamber come over and vote, uh, vote for the DHS appropriation. And, and so, in terms of that, it's certainly Republicans are the only ones who can be the determining factor. Uh, and I think there's lots of reasons why why that should happen. Your thoughts on that, Jessica? And what are the Democrats saying? Well, I think that the Democrats they know what they want. And I do believe that it's really, the ball is in the Republicans' court right now. You're gonna have a couple of people who hold out when it comes time to go through fiscal session and just say, I'm still not gonna fund this. And then you're just gonna to have to spend every day working on certain people and just saying, what, what do I have to do to get you to come over and get on board with this? Because is it a matter of saying, if we don't fund this, here's what's going to happen to our state. Are you really prepared to be one of the people that was okay with making pretty extreme budget cuts that are to the detriment of our state? If you are okay with that, then off you go, I guess. So it's really, it's back in the Republicans' court. I think the Democrats can do a good job at educating people about what would happen if we don't move forward with this funding. So do you think that we see maybe some sort of offering for these opponents of Arkansas Works? They get a chance to try to pass some sort of budget bill or some sort of funding bill that uh, doesn't have Arkansas Works funded in there just to see it fail so they can go back home and do that? Is that the political cover that they need? I mean, maybe leadership decision, and I mean, probably not a bad idea. But uh, to me, it's always, the key is, is asking some people to vote for the appropriation without asking them to admit that they were, that they're changing their mind on Arkansas Works or that they were wrong about how they just voted. We just had the policy vote, and it passed overwhelmingly. 70 to 30 in the House, 25 to 10 in the Senate. And the debate's over. I mean, I know it's not over in the minds of a few, but but voting for a DHS appropriation is not supporting a policy that was passed by a very strong majority of the chambers. In 2009, I voted against the tobacco tax increase, but I voted for the Department of Health appropriation every year after that. And, and so, that not and that's, I didn't reverse my position on the tobacco tax increase. I lost the fight. 75 or 70, 75 of my colleagues voted for it, and it became the law. And once that happens, you have to step back and realize that the, the appropriation process isn't the mechanism through which you can, you can change policy. You can affect policy, but you, it, you can't ask a majority of your colleagues to simply reverse their position that they just took this, uh, you know, last week now uh, in, in approving Arkansas Works. We had that vote. So Jessica, you think there has to be some political cover for these opponents of Arkansas Works? I would really like to think that we don't have to let it go that far. Everything that John just said is right. That's that's the type of perspective that I think overall is lacking within this body in so many ways. You have to understand, just like what John said, that you're going to lose some things, but that doesn't give you the right to hold up what's best for the entire state. The governor's even gone on record and said, look, I don't want Washington, D.C. style politics creeping into our state. And by doing this, by going down this road, that's what is happening. So let's try to avoid that. And, you know, there are plenty of people who you can be opposed to this, but you're on record. You've said your piece. We know that you're opposed to it, but we need to keep moving forward as a state, and you're not always going to get what you want. Well, Senator Bart Hester, I used this quote earlier in my conversation with Senator Hendren here. He said that uh, he thinks the only thing that's going to bring this thing to resolution is a crash. That implies to me that there's going to be a pretty good brawl. Well, that's a, a pretty stark way of looking at things, and I'd like to think that the majority, the vast majority of members in this body don't agree with that, and that who who would want to knowingly just run into a crash like that. That's <laughs> not what anybody wants. Does managed care enter into this debate over funding? And I know you've got uh, your uh, perspective on managed care, but I mean, does that even just become part of the topic of debate? Does the governor have to cut some deal to maybe get some votes over? 
It doesn't sound, no, it doesn't sound like it. I mean, he said in his press conference Friday that that, that wasn't a point of debate for him, and uh, you, you can take him at his word. I mean, I, I think he was very smart to, to distinguish the two debates. Uh, I, you know, as you know, I mean, I, I believe in managed care, and I've worked for, for it for a long time, and so I'm biased in that regard, but it's fair to separate the two debates out and have one over Arkansas Works, and, you know, that's what he's done, and I think anyone that tries to bring in managed care to the debate after he took it out as a sign of leadership, uh, I mean, I think that would be a sign of, 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 of politics being inserted back into it when he tried to take it out. Interesting take. All right, I got to end it there. So Jessica Deloach, Saban, John Burris, thank you both for participating. Yeah. Appreciate you being here. Thank, thank you. you. When we return, Senator John Bozeman joins us from Washington, D.C., his take on the presidential race, a Supreme Court vacancy, and his Democratic opponent's debate challenge. This is Talk Business and Politics.